We're live with Nico Megalutis, NCAA champion this year. Nico, thanks for taking the time to talk to me today. Yeah, thanks for having me on here. Uh, just want to jump into it. I'll probably bounce all around, but it's been a few months since you've won your championship. Uh, you've been chasing it, I'm guessing, for most of your life. Has it settled in, and how has it affected you emotionally? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely settled in. Uh, I don't think it's settled in until, I don't know, maybe a month or a month ago or whatever. It really didn't, I guess, at first seem, I don't know, it was, it was just a different feeling. You know, I guess it's a little bit like when I won my first high school state title, except this was way bigger and, you know, it was, it took me a lot longer to get. So, yeah, I mean, it settled, it's, uh, settled in and obviously, you know, doesn't feel too bad. <laughs> so how does it affect you? You said there's some similarities to your high school championship. I mean, does it quiet some of the noise? Does it satisfy you? Does it make you hungrier, the combination of things? Uh, I think it's just a good spring, you know, to spring me into my international career. Um, I got something that I really wanted, and I think it just now it, it makes me more relaxed going into my international career. I It's like... You know, I have something that, you know, I really wanted to get, you know, now just do what you got to do, you know, to get the next thing where, yeah, I mean, I don't want to say it would have affected me if I didn't win, but it would always be that thing. Like I never won the prestigious, you know, thing that I really wanted and, you know, not to say it would have really affected me, but I guess it may be a tiny, tiny bit. It always would have been in the back of my mind. But um, it's just a real good thing to transition me. I missed you in the last, what was the last couple sentences or last sentence? It's just, it's just a real good, uh, you know, win to uh, transition me into my international career now. So has your own self-talk changed with winning it or has it always been the same? You know, how you kind of talk to yourself about wrestling and who you are? Has, no, it doesn't, it doesn't change no. who I am. Um, you know, there's no, you know, I'm not labeled as, you know, a national champ, you know, that's not okay. how I label myself. It's, it's the same thing. Um, I don't know. No, I don't label myself any different. Okay. I'm going to get into that a little bit later when we talk about, I don't know, maybe faith and wrestling and business and, yeah. um, so can you tell me what the difference is in your emotion? You've been on a great Penn State team for the last five years, redshirt uh, the year before this. But what's the difference in feelings between a national championship team and an individual national championship? Well, it's a lot nicer to get two of them. Yeah. You know, in the same year where I've always, I mean, obviously, you know, my story, I've always been, you know, pretty much there and um, didn't get it done. And, you know, it was awesome to have my team win it. But now it's just way more satisfying, you know. You get your win, and the team gets their win. So it's um, obviously, you know, I, I just focus on my performance to get my team, you know, to win it. You know, I get as many points as I can to contribute to my team, and obviously, you know, I uh, I, I support my teammates as much as I can and try and you know get them as many points as possible. But I can't be the one to do it. You know, I can do some encouraging to them, but that's about it. Sure. So I just focus on getting as many points as I can for our team. A lot of guys come out of high school, you're a blue chip, I mean, multiple, four-time state champion? Three. Three time, I'm sorry, three. Um, it's hard to come to the college level and take some losses. In your freshman year, you weren't, uh, you had, a, how many, 10 losses your freshman year? I don't even know, but... Uh. But I think it was eight. eight, and you went on a run to the national championship. Can you tell me what the mental adjustment it is that you were making? Was it taking it more seriously? Was it, just describe that process because to me that that mental toughness that you showed during that championship run is one of the things I dig the most about guys. I don't know if you turned it on or you put stuff together, but can you explain that in your own words? I've always been pretty good when you know it matters the most. And yeah, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a consistent wrestler. You know, every single time I'm gonna give it my all, and I'm never. You're never really gonna see. You know, you see some guys who may get majored, and then the next time they'll beat them. That, that's never gonna be me. You know, yeah, there's times where I wrestle better, 
Uh, but my freshman year, you just you really feel it your freshman year, and even this year because I didn't compete much, I was getting better and better every single match. And my freshman year, I just stepped in the national tournament. Uh, I was just like, man, what the heck is there to lose? You know what? What the heck is there to lose? Pretty mm-hmm. much, and I just said I'm gonna give it my all for every single second and that's what I did it wasn't like I changed up anything it was just it's go time right that was pretty much it I've heard and and of course I got better as the you know year went on every single match I was getting better I mean you look at the beginning of my freshman year Zach Sanders completely you know that was the one loss I've ever had where I was like wow that kid was better than me during the season, yes, yeah. that was my second match, and I've never had something like that because it was always been if I lost, it was by a point. Uh-huh. And then you look at them at Big Tens. I still lost by the same score, but I'll be way more in the match. And then at Nationals, you know, I beat them. So it just kind of showed my progress throughout the year. Where so. We're talking about it a little bit. Where do you get that mental toughness? I've heard Coach Cody and Coach Kale say, I never have to worry. We never have to worry about getting Nico ready. He comes. He gives 100%. Where does that competitive drive and mental toughness come from? Were you born with it? Did you develop it? Did your dad give it to you as your birthday present? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a great birthday present he gave me. Uh, I think it was a little bit I was born with it. I always, you know, I remember my dad and I, we'd be wrestling, and we had a yellow mat in our room, and of course, he's going to beat me. Yeah, he was, I was five years old, or four years old even, and I remember he would act like, all right, I'm one of your opponents right now, and I remember if he beat me, I would lose, and it was the end of the world. Um, I mean, I'm wrestling my dad, who's 40 years old (laughs) at the time, you know, five times my size and I would lose and it's the end of the world. So that was a little bit of it, but how I was raised and my coaches have always, you know, Jody, John strip matter. Whenever I was young, Mm -hmm. they just instilled the toughness in me. And obviously once I got to college, I was very mentally tough, but Kel kind of broke it down in ways that I never really heard it before. And, um, more and more so being like grateful was a lot what Kale drove at you and so it was a different it was a way to improve my mental toughness so it just kept getting better and better okay just to go back to that because I know he's mentioned that a lot and I've heard some of the guys on the team mention the grateful aspect of competing does that take pressure off because it's an opportunity as opposed to an obligation or how did it affect you yeah I guess it takes pressure off if you consider pressure a word. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to explore that more later, but go ahead. I'm listening. <laughs> I, it just, uh, for me this year, what I would do is I would, it worked for me is I would look around at the crowd before every single match and soak it in and be like, wow, I get to do this in front of, whether it was at Indiana where there was 200 people or <laughs> it was at the NCAA tournament where yeah. it was 20,000 people. Um, I just kind of soaked it in that way and was like, wow, you get one last year of this, enjoy this opportunity. Not many people get to. So that's kind of how I looked at it. Gotcha. Um, So you started wrestling when you were four or five. How has your relationship changed with wrestling since then? Did you like it when you, I mean, you were obsessed, it sounds like, with beating your dad, but did you enjoy it? Was it fun or you just liked the hard work or what was the... The lure. Uh, I'm trying to think. When I was young, I don't know. I just, I just loved it. I, yeah. I don't really know what I loved about it when I was young. It sounds like it connected with an essence of you or something, something deep. Yeah, just something that I liked. Maybe it was me versus my opponent. How where baseball? I would go out and I mean I wasn't good at baseball at all, but I would get mad at other guys whatever and I couldn't control what they did so out on the mat it's just me if I win it's because I mean my coaches have helped me a lot but out there if I win it was because I won you know if I lost it's because I lost so I kind of like that if you could give yourself any advice 
Nico now and Nico 10, 15 years ago? I mean, is there something that you would tell yourself? I think we, you kind of mentioned it even is every opportunity you got to enjoy, yeah. uh, whether it's out doing a week long camp when you're young and maybe you're hating it a little bit, enjoy it. Yeah. You get that opportunity to go wrestle with guys out, whether if it's another state or whatever it is, just enjoy every opportunity. It's definitely something. Gotcha. Uh, little word association. You just first thing you think of, Coach Cody. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. Uh, he he's very he knows pretty much everything about me. Yeah. Just pretty you know, and the he can tell coming into practice. He can just read you, you know, he can tell if you're feeling great, if you're maybe not as strong, if you're hmm. not as quick, or if you're feeling strong as heck it's just it's a weird thing to explain but he's so good at reading people and feeling and watching them and knowing all right this guy you know maybe needs to pick it up tomorrow or this guy needs to take a break tomorrow just he's really good with that stuff gotcha um how about jordan conway heart yeah uh he's got a ton of heart you can uh, he's just a goer. Uh, that's why I like wrestling with him, and he's a great kid, too. Okay. Coach Kale? <sighs> Coach Kale. Man, there's many words <laughs> for him. Oh, this is actually pretty tough. You want to uh, think? I, I don't want to press you. I don't know. There's a ton of words I could use. Obviously, motivating. I think motivating is a big one and he does it in a different way it's kind of hard to explain but motivating not just in that sense but I mean he's accomplished a few things in his life yeah that I see him and it's like well he did this so I better listen to him gotcha yeah okay. um Olympic year how about Frank Molinaro <sighs> ridiculous ridiculous man he is I, I haven't really got the chance to wrestle with him. Like, throughout the year we would wrestle, but it, a lot of it would be, you know, getting ready for a match. So he won it when we went live. Because he's obviously got, you know, 25 whatever pounds on me. So yeah. he wasn't going, you know, ham. Or maybe in the beginning of the year he was against me. And then I wrestled him a few weeks ago. And it's unbelievable. Different. Way harder to get through his legs. Huh. His attacks are better. Everything's better. Nice. Uh, Nico Megalutis? <laughs> uh, uh, for me, oh, this is... I would just... Uh, constant attacking, going... Can you say uh, that again? We had a little break up there. Constant attacking is the only thing I heard. Constant attacking, going, relentless... I would say those are the words. Nice. Uh, you've been a, a, a member of the Penn State wrestling team for the last five years, uh, moving on to the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club. Can you tell me some, some what are your highlights of the that are not headlines over the last five years? Of Penn State? Yeah, just your time at, you know, in the team, Penn State. It's just, you know, it's unbelievable. Uh, now that you look back at it, and obviously the titles, I, me and my dad were talking that every single year I wrestled, I was on the. We won every single tournament: the scuffle, the Big Tens, the Nationals. So that's kind of, I guess, it never really sunk in. I, I guess it hasn't sunk in, but twenty years down the road, I could be like, yeah, every single thing I was in, we won. So. <laughs> dynasty pretty awesome um and right now during the dynasty maybe don't recognize it as much because you're going through it and you're focused on getting what you want um but it'll be pretty cool looking back being like wow this is one of the best teams in ncaa history you know ever and just the guys on our team um all of them are you know just humble and they love the sport and 
just our our style of just I mean, everyone has a different style, but everyone has the same philosophy mm-hmm. going out and just wearing your opponent out and getting points, breaking your opponent. And I think, uh, you know, that's pretty cool about us. Totally. We talked a little bit about your mental approach being a scrapper from a very early age and you're this self-motivated guy who shows up giving 100% every time at the mat. Um when it's competition time, did that ever make being coach difficult for you? Or is it just, I'm, I'm sorry, you're shaking already. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was always a little stubborn. Um, I would say up until uh, my junior year in college, I was pretty stubborn. Hmm. Um, about, I, I would accept, you know, people helping me out, but there'd be some times where um, maybe even Kale came up and, I was in the middle of a drill and I was just like, all right, I got to get this drill going. You know, I got to pick it up and he would come stop me and maybe I'd get a little like irritated a little bit just because I guess I was always a little my stubborn side. But the biggest thing I learned during my red shirt year was just be coachable. And now I, I'm, I'm very good. You know, anyone that has advice, I'll listen if it's you, if it's anyone, I'm much more willing to listen and um, just learn because, yeah, I'm never going to get tired in a match. I'm never going to wrestle not as hard as my opponent, but my technique is great, but it needs to get better. And, you know, technique is what they come help me on. And you got to listen. You got to just listen to them. So that's a big thing that, I've gotten better at. That's probably the biggest thing over my red shirt year. So it happened during your red shirt year? Yeah, yeah. Because I was able to sit back a lot more and um, just learn instead of getting ready. Oh, I have Minnesota on Friday. I have Iowa Sunday. You know, Michigan that day, you know. So I was going to ask, I'm sorry, go ahead. um, So I, and, and it was just the maturity aspect that I just got a lot more mature during that year. Interesting. So was that a consequence of just, you think, the co- competitive pressure being gone? Or is it also just having been through the a few seasons and not reached your goals? Or is it... it what, what uh, you, yeah, maybe a combination of everything. Yeah. It's um, interesting. I, I, I was going to ask you about... So the red shirt year, I mean, it sounds really pivotal, even though uh, I mean you were very successful up to that point. But mm. this year just seemed a little different watching you. Mm. I don't know. Would you agree or not? I would agree. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I changed my style much, or I got a few different attacks, but yeah, it's just more mentality. Yeah, a little bit, just little things. It's hard to explain, but I just, uh, I guess, what I meant by that was your confidence level. I've always felt like you were um, going to give a hundred percent and wrestle really hard. And this is just from the observer seat. But this year, I just felt like you looked more confident in in your going out to wrestle. I don't know why I would say that. Just the mm-hmm. feeling I got. I'm not Cody, so, you know, I'm just, you know, just my idea, though. <laughs> yeah, that is true, though. Okay. Um, was, was, there any other, was there any doubt in your mind that you were going to wrestle at the senior level? Oh, no, no, there was no doubt. No doubt? I mean, the only thing is if something crazy happened, but I've always wanted to wrestle on the senior level. Always, okay. And was there ever any doubt that you were going to be at the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club? I always, I yeah. mean, unless something crazy, like I said, yeah. happened. Okay. But I, I want to wrestle with these, you know, coaches. I want to train under them. Uh, I know you you qualified for the Worlds University of Worlds. I think it's in Turkey this September, October. Yeah, October. Um, has anything changed now that it's a senior level? I mean, do you approach it differently? I know that you're going to go into financial planning. I know that you've got, you know, as guys grow up, they get a life. I was talking to Frank Molinaro about this. You know, you have, you have <laughs> girlfriends, you get married, you have babies. I mean, do you feel the maturity changing how you approach the sport? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, um, I guess, more relaxed right now, you could say. Uh, I'm still... But the thing that's beautiful about it is that it's a whole new chapter. It's, you know, oh, I got to wrestle from the seatbelt position. I got to learn how to, you know, score my laces. Where before, I always did freestyle, but 
it was kind of, you know, it was more so, all right, I got to wrestle folk style, folk style. That was the big thing where now it's, I mean, it's a whole new chapter. It's, it's, that's pretty cool. So I'm, I'm very hungry right now, which, right. which is awesome. All right. And so uh, was it last year when you lost on the, uh, the one point qualifying? Is that, you know, is it ringing a bell and the rule was ended up to be changed after, you know, a couple months. Yeah. No takedown. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, yeah that was, Three years ago. So three years ago, I got young kids, so everything kind of blurs <laughs> together. Um, did, uh, do you think about that? I mean, you're so close right now at, at the senior level. In my yeah. mind, I'm just curious if you play that kind of stuff back in your head. No, no. I mean, it's yeah. Did he deserve that point? No, no. It was actually supposed to be mine because he was on the shot clock. But yeah, I didn't. I didn't score in that match. You know, he didn't score either, but I didn't deserve to win. And you know, I've gotten many calls in my life that haven't been great, but I've gotten many calls that have been. So it's like, you can't dwell on a call. It's you know, yeah. stupid. Sounds good. I like that attitude. Uh, can you tell me, are you going to be competing at all um, in any kind of tournaments between now and the, uh, the worlds? I don't really think there's anything. There's really nothing between okay. here and there. I mean, there's Spain this weekend, but I got a few other obligations I got to do, and you know, so I don't think so. Okay. Will you be traveling at all? Are you going to go out to the, uh, you know, to the USOC and? Um... Yeah, yeah, I'll be there in a couple weeks. Okay. Uh, spend a week out there, which I'm really excited. I've actually never been there. Okay. Before, so uh, it'll be good, you know, hanging out, hanging around the Zadik and all those guys, just learning. Will you be going into any other regional training centers to get different looks, or is that going to be pretty much it? I haven't talked to my coaches or okay. anything about that. Okay. So can, if you had to describe, is it seems like senior level guys, maybe it's there's less structure potentially, but what are the biggest differences you're experiencing right now, it, changing from a college wrestler to a senior level wrestler? I'm just focusing on positions, like I said. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot more relaxed. I'm always going to be a wrestler that's wrestling as hard as I can for six minutes, but it's more now it's I look at it like, all right, what do I got to do to be the best in the world? Get better in positions and get better technically. So that's my number one focus. And it's not about right now going – you know, an hour live go or, you know, something crazy because realistically that's, I have that. That's never going to leave me. Now it's, all right, will I be able to score or will I be able to get out if I'm in a four point and he's behind me? Will I be able to score if I'm, you know, behind him on a four point? You know, just things like that that are most important. Do you visualize your matches before you go out and compete? 100%, yeah, okay. yeah. Just definitely. curious. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I definitely visualize. So I, I think it was the Big Ten just replayed the national championships. Did you foresee your national, the finals, going that way, you know, uh, against the Iowa guy? I mean, the two things that I scored on, one was a duck under, which I, I don't even think I've drilled that. Never seen college. you do it before, so... And then the other was, I don't know what I did. That scramble to a half Nelson rolling through? Never, I mean, I've done, you know, things where I've picked the ankle, but I've never really lifted someone up and threw them over me or whatever. So I guess those things, no, I never drilled. So I didn't. But, you know, I, for, I saw myself see, getting takedowns and scoring, and, but uh, maybe not in those ways. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just curious. Like I saw, yeah, I watched it a couple times, and uh, and does that change your approach? Thinking maybe I, you know, do something different on the offense or not? Uh, I mean, I have a lot of attacks, so I can score in many different ways. So I don't know. I mean, just always mm -hmm. willing to try new things and be coachable, like I'm, yeah. you know, saying. So I'm sure your your goals for University Worlds are to win. 
Do you have goals written down? I, I mean, there's a story you have a national championship, uh, you know, national champion taped to your, your steering wheel. Um, do you have anything like that for this coming year or for your senior career? Are you still thinking about what the goals are for the next five years? I mean, obviously, the biggest goal in wrestling is the Olympics. But right now, I'm focused on the university uh, world champions or world championships and um, winning that. So that's kind of my first step right now. But I do visualize winning 2020 in Tokyo. So, um, okay. I mean, that's definitely on my radar, too. Now, I'm a huge proponent of guys having goals and keeping them in their face. When did you start doing this? Uh, I guess I've done it my whole life. Really? Did someone introduce it to you, or did you just say, you know what, I want to do it myself? I guess I heard you hear people doing it, and I don't know. It just when you see something, it makes it more realistic. Yeah. So I guess, I don't know, I've just always done it. Got it. I, I read about it. A Harvard professor had half the senior class, and he had half that class write down their goals and starting it. And this is back in the 50s, and that reunions, that half of the class was infinitely more successful than the half of the class that didn't do it. And uh, there was a study about it. I, don't, I can't remember it. I cited, I just read about it in Investor's Business Daily and started doing it back, I guess, in the late, in the early 90s, mid-90s. I, I was just curious. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's definitely beneficial. Totally. Um, I've been told that you've got an incredible George the Animal Steel impersonation. Is that, is that something you can break out, or is that not? I don't know what you're talking about. Really? His lantern's messed up. He's the one who does that. Is it really the case? Yeah, he's the one. He's the yeah. one? You don't do that? No. No? All right, I'll mess with him after he has yeah, knee surgery. Once he gets his knee all fixed up. Um, so you visualize out to 2020, being an Olympic champion in Tokyo. Ten years from now, where do you see yourself? Uh, that's actually a pretty tough question. I it, There's so many things right now in my life that I want to do. Obviously, I'm kind of taking it year by year. Um, but in ten years from now, who knows? I could be still wrestling it could be maybe in coaching I could just be only if not only but I could just be solely focusing on financial advising uh -huh. um, it's just I don't know I'm kind of right now focused on this four-year time period oh well, I mean really day by day but um, who knows how long I'll be wrestling gotcha do you still love the sport yeah yeah just a bit just a bit I <laughs> Just tell me, like, what does it feel like wrestling when you're thinking about it? I mean, like, coming into a national championships, like, what about it feeds you and keeps you coming back? There's always new things I want to get done. I've, I mean, I've been to a lot of international tournaments and uh, not a lot, but like four. And um, I've wrestled some of the, you know, very good guys and you just feel you know, how they wrestle and you're just like, man, I, you know, I know I can do big things in this stage of my career. And so, I don't know, I just feel like you can always be hungry. Whether, I mean, look at Jordan Burroughs. He's already an Olympic champ, I think three-time world champ. And who knows, he may go till 2020. Yeah. So, um, I feel like there's always something, something you can get done. So, just to explore that, because I've talked to Jordan Burroughs about it, you know, that hunger, how he, how it, you know, the hardest thing to do might be repeating as a champion at some level, because you, maybe the hunger level, you know, uh, is affected, and I'm just curious, so you are always got something new that you're talking about you can get done, how, how do you, is there other ways that you feed your desire and hunger level to be competitive and to be the best? Are there other ways besides? Just love the competition. Like, is there something that you like, oh, I want to be, not just improving, like, so the change from folk style to freestyle might be some technique improvement, but I'm just curious, like, how you, like, I, I think, I don't want to speak for Jordan, but he told me just how he feels mentally, like, someone's attacking him, his championship, but it gets him feeling like the underdog on some level, and I'm just curious how you, you know, mentally keep yourself as hungry as possible. 
I, I think it pretty comes pretty easy to me. I, I've always been pretty, uh, pretty motivated and hungry. So I don't know. Mm. As of yet, I've never really had a problem with it. Okay. So I didn't want to cut you off, but we're getting long. I just want a couple, couple final questions. Uh, I know that you're going into the financial services industry. Um, so you've got, and we talked about, you're not sure where you'll be in the future and wrestling doesn't define you. Um, I'm assuming that has to do with your spiritual faith and who you are as a person. Yeah, for sure. Uh, can you just tell me how that feeds you as just a person and wrestling is an extension of you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, it's especially a huge thing that helped me through this year and I've always been faithful, but this year it even gets to the maturity thing going back to that. You just understand it more and just your purpose and you know, why things happen and just kind of those, those lines. And you're here, you know, when I'm out on the mat, it's not me. It's, you know, it's God and me, you know, going out there and wrestling somebody. And, um, that's kind of how I look at it. And you got to give when you're on the mat, give your 300, how long is a match? Seven minutes times 60, 420 seconds, 420 seconds, you know, wrestling the way God would want you to wrestle. So that's kind of the way I look at it, not like, oh, I have to win this, even though, obviously, yeah, I want to win. But it's not, oh, I have to win, I have to win. Just go out and wrestle how God wants you to wrestle for however long the match is. And you know what? That's the best you can do. Yep. Nico, I really appreciate you taking the time. Good luck in Turkey. And uh, I hope to ch check in with you afterwards. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, thanks for having me. Th it. Thanks, Nico. Have a good weekend. Thanks.